I could play Captain Von Trapp and also like the little one who hurts her finger in a teapot. I could play all the parts in that film. Sounds like a remake. Sound yeah. of Music. Yeah. Mini Driver yeah. plays yeah. every all part. The, all the parts. <laughs> we'll call it the Sound of Mini. Yeah. <laughs> It's a crazy story. I've never heard something like this before. My dad's a classical music teacher at university, and so I grew up listening to music constantly. And I remember my dad telling me he was the first black man in the South to be a part of the Philharmonic Symphony. And so to, to, see, to see it go as far back as Joseph, it was really cool to just see the, the origin story and uh, be a part of that. And in some ways, I felt like I was going to get to honor my dad and Joseph all at the same time and the lineage that after, um, afterwards. Yeah. I felt a just an unfathomable shame and sadness that I had never heard of this person. And Stephanie's, Stephanie's script, like, it was so uh, painfully uh, raw and beautiful. And this, this section of his life, some of it fictionalized, lots of it autobiographical. It was such a unique read. I hadn't read a script like this in a long time where you're exploring a life of someone that, like Minnie said, shamefully you know very little about. And I think also exploring a story like this is a reminder that history has an author and a very specific author at that. So it's a kind of encouragement to challenge that and challenge the people who we've been fed as like the greats, aren't the only greats. For me, it's it just was sort of like the perfect story of this man with an incredible life, but also just the music of it all really drew me in and he reminded me, I guess, of just like the figures that I had admired, like Jimi Hendrix or Prince, and he was just sort of like a pillar, like those two musicians, but in a completely different time that you wouldn't have necessarily thought of someone existing that way. He was really transgressive. He was incredibly well-educated and multifaceted, and to me, his life is so big and rich, so, you know, there's so many different ways to attack or approach this story in particular. I use Jimmy and Prince, too, for the, for I guess, just the, the just the general energy of Joseph and, like, kind of the swagger and, like, the, the style and how he looks, how he walks, you know, how he, the confidence and knowing that, you know, my music is it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's just, a, it's just a, a general understanding of who you are as an artist and what you contribute to the culture and to the, the, the sound that is being um, generated throughout the entire city. Yeah, I mean, we just tried to kind of anchor the movie in Joseph's point of view and, and imagine what it would, what that time period would have looked and felt like. Yes, Joseph has been forgotten, but he has been forgotten until very recently when when attention more attention has been brought justifiably justly to him it's more about him having been erased than forgotten right yeah. uh, it didn't happen in a benign way it was and, napoleon right in like 18, yeah. it, it was 1802 it was yes. the, it was him just reinstating slavery yeah when and napoleon, ex, but he yeah. was excised exactly exactly we wanted to tell the story of this character who comes into a sense of self-awareness, a greater sense of self-awareness by the end of the movie than he had at the beginning of the movie. And part of that involved following him uh, and, and yoking, yoking the audience's perspective to Joseph's point of view as the movie unfolded. So that hopefully gave us a, a, a different window into that, that very kind of opulent period of French history.